corpse or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Remember when Bran worked back in time to Winterfell and discovered that he actually triggered Hodor's initial seizure that turned him into Hodor? Young Willis started screaming, hold the door, repeatedly connecting to his present day death, and after time, the phrase simply shrunk into Hodor. This is very important because we learn that Bran doesn't just see visions of the past, he can actually travel to the past and influence events yet uncontrollable at this point. The first Tower of Joy flashback showed that Bran was just a whisper in the wind when he was witnessing his father rushing to save his sister. But during the Blood Raven cave escape, we discovered that he was the reason for Hodor's lifelong misfortune as a simpleton. We also see with his visions of the wildfire under King's Landing that he actually can see the future. So what else can Bran do? And what else has he done? We all remember the direct flashback to Aerys Targaryen shouting, Burn them all, in one of Bran's jumbled visions. There are many theories as to what made Aerys Targaryen go insane, including the fact that his parents were brother and sister, and like most Targaryens, would conceive children through incest to keep bloodlines pure. We can see a reference to children of incest becoming crazy when Cersei questions Joffrey's aggressive way of ruling, and she wonders if it's because he was the product of incest comparing him to the Mad King. More popularly, the Mad King may have been hellbent on murder because Bran or the previous Three-Eyed Raven tried to talk to Ares through their visions and this led to Ares hearing voices in his head which turned him insane. But what could Bran be saying to King Ares to make him go so crazy? Well, what if he was saying burn them all in reference to the White Walkers because winter is surely coming and Bran would know that wildfire is absolutely necessary to win the war for the dawn. Since Bran is not currently in control of his abilities, Ares does not interpret his whispers correctly. I mean, remember when Jaime told Robert Baratheon about the day he killed the Mad King? What about Ares Targaryen? What did the Mad King say when you stabbed him in the back? He said the same thing he'd been saying for hours. Burn them all. The same thing he had been saying for hours. It sounds like he couldn't control what he was saying. The two cases seem very similar. Going with this theory, let's think about how it could have happened. Let's say Bran time travels to King's Landing during Ares' reign by accident and not understand what he's doing. Knowing what the Mad King did, but maybe not understanding the whole aspect of time travel just yet. He ends up causing a lot of harm, more than just what he did to Hodor, before he figures out control over his power. One interesting add-on to that, since Bran was able to connect with his father at the Tower of Joy, what if he went back to visit Ned right before his death? If you look back at the execution scene, it looks as if Ned is looking out at the crowd for Arya. His facial expressions are of shock, but then a sudden calming. What if Bran put himself in front of Ned and he was staring at his son, from the future as Bran calms his beloved father right before his death. While no true proof of this, it makes for one amazing moment if it actually happened. Now if we choose to believe this, then it opens up many unanswered questions and unfinished plot lines from the evolution of Westeros. This is where it gets good. We can guess Bran will eventually get control of his abilities, and can appear in a specific place and take a physical form. This leads him to go back in time, recognizing the White Walker issue, he decides to build the wall. The theory is that Bran Stark is actually Bran the Builder, who lived 8,000 years before the present moment, one of the invading first men and the founder of House Stark. He built Winterfell and the wall and possibly Storm's End. You know that tall stone tower in Old Town we see when Sam and Gilly arrive in to gain acceptance of the Citadel? Bran the Builder built that also. Going back to Bran Stark the Cripple, we hear Old Man likes to tell him stories about Bran the Builder. I could tell you the story about Brandon the Builder, Old Man said. That was always your favorite. Old Man would actually get confused about who Bran was too. Quote, all the Brandon Starks had become one person in her head. And what about the conversation between Ned and Arya in King's Landing, which is a reference to Bran as a cripple and a reference to Bran the Builder? 
He wanted to be Knight of the King's Guard. He can't be one now, can he? No. But someday, he could be Lord of a Holdfast. He'll sit on the King's Council. Or he might raise castles. Like Brandon the Builder. This passage was important enough to appear in the show, where you'd have to imagine the showrunners would have left it out if it weren't way more important than it looks on the surface. Duran would have none of it. The seventh castle he raised, and most massive of all. Some said the children of the forest helped him build it, shaping the stones with magic. Others claimed that a small boy told him what he must do, a boy who would grow to be Bran the Builder. Next up is that Bran Stark may have actually created There Must Always Be a Stark in Winterfell, just to ensure that he actually ends up being born. He may have been a few of the Bran and Starks that have been in Winterfell over the past millenniums. Not only Bran the Builder, just to ensure certain historic events would take place to maintain control of the known world. What if Bran is the Lord of Light himself? The idea is that the voices that whisper to the priests and priestesses at night are actually Bran traveling back in time to try and form an army to take on the White Walkers. These actions are interpreted and become a full-fledged religion. Also, it is important to remind yourself that the Lord of Light is always trying to find the prince that was promised to defeat the White Walkers, and it seems plausible that it's Jon Snow. I really like the idea that Bran could be the Lord of Light and he chose Jon to be his champion. So anyways, who knows how deep this theory could go? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about Bran the Builder and if Bran have been a number of the Bran and Starks through history. What do you think about the Lord of Light? Who do you think that is? As always, thank you and see you soon.